afternoon, Truth Wins team. It's good to be with you, and we're going to jump right in, and today is, our topic is, will he do it? Will he do it? Wonder what, wondering what he's going to do. Will he do it? Will he do what he said? Let's see. So we're going to go to our scripture to start right off. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Surely he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we, or ye, were healed. Right, so that's... A pretty famous thing that people go over a lot that would be um, our redemption um, statement from Isaiah, Isaiah right. but I think a lot of people don't really know what it implies you hear it people will take different parts of it and quote it and it's really great we kind of know what happens at the beginning so let's see what it really also, represents also uh, the New Testament scripture is a is a um, a, a quote of really Isaiah. Peter, First Peter is a quote of that. But the thing is, is it's in a past tense form, were healed. Right. So let's see what the redemption chapter shows us. The redemption prophecy that Jesus accomplished in the resurrection. And the four are cross, cleaning, and salvation. Upper room, gift of the Spirit, ascension, great life commission, and great physician, which is healing. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down and put together like the first part of Isaiah, because it's kind of like a contract. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave us a contract. And when you have a contract, you fulfill it all. Like if you're going to build a house, if they just do the foundation... And then they go away. Oh, we don't want oh, the rest. Well, yeah, it's like you, a, you go, a ship this. without a, a paddle. Right. A ship without a paddle or a, or a house a, without a roof. Right. A house without a roof. And you don't want that. So this package was the redemption package. So Isaiah talked about it. So it, it first of all, we'll go see what the very first part that it does. The first part is the cross. The cross B. But he was wounded for our transgressions sins, transgression, an act of transgre transgressing, violation of a law, a, a command, etc., and sin. Right, so we see the very first thing that he did was he was wounded for our transgression, which are sin. So everybody, everybody pretty much knows the cross was to cover our sins. Cover our sins. Right, that's part of the contract. He redeemed was, us. He, he made us... Uh, more than conquerors on the cross. Right. So we kind of all know that's the, the first part of right. it. Right. And, and, and so most Christians don't deny that. I would say 99.99 say, yeah, that's true. Right. And that, so we're going to see what other part is part of the redemption. And so we'll go to the next part. It says the upper room. He was bruised for our iniquities, sins. Deuteronomy 5.9 says, visit the the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Well, right. That's kind of a weird thing because if you look at it, if you don't really understand it, and that's why we're tying in Deuteronomy to it so you understand because it looks like, well, the first part was the cross. He took care of our sins. Well, and so it says... He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And iniquities are? The passing of the sins from... From third and fourth generation. Right, because you probably heard the statement, 
uh, like father, like son, like, so like, the father's an alcoholic, the son's an alcoholic. Right. Or, you know, the, the thing of, uh, his grandfather got cancer, his father got cancer, his mother got cancer. Right. He probably will have cancer. So it's like the iniquities passing to the third and fourth generation. So on the cross, Jesus paid the price to stop that. Cause that's the yes. curse of the law. That's epigenetics, right? Right. And so people might go, well, what, what is epigenetics? How does it get there? Well, scientists <laughs> have actually found that dysfunction doesn't really change your genes. It's a thing they call epigenetics, which is put upon your genetics. It can be positive too. It, it doesn't have to right. be negative. But the, the study they did was in Sweden. <clears throat> they took um, a group of chickens and chickens like to lay eggs when it's light. So to mess up the chicken, they put it in a room where there's no windows. So the only light they get is the artificial light that the scientists put on. And so the scientists have it on light at midnight and the next day it's light at um, one o'clock in the afternoon and then, then it flips all over. So pretty soon the chickens stop laying eggs. So they thought, well, that's interesting. They've noticed that like doing that mixes up its time clock. Well, they decided to hatch some of the eggs from the chickens that had their time clock mixed up. And they found that the laying of the next generation eggs was impacted, like the iniquity right. or the, the badness that happened to the chickens passed yeah. to the next chickens. It was and, and uh, I, like a, a, a bad habit. <laughs> right, so it's sort of like science is proving this. But of course they can't make you be an alcoholic. <laughs> And then say, let's see if you could get your child to be an alcoholic. But, but, but the family has has done things that will pass to you unless you receive the blessing of the Lord. Of the cross, right? Right. Redemption from the curse of the law. Redeemed so, from the curse of the right, law. Right. So we do see positive things also passing. If you had a grandmother who prayed, you may pray and you have right. a healthier family. So you, want a, you don't want to call anybody a negative name. And you don't want to uh, have bad habits that, that will pass on to your family. Right. Because we, we like it. Like if you went to school and studied and did well, you pass that kind yeah. of epigenetics on to your I can say that about children. my father. My father was a great father and he passed great, great traits to me. Right. And so you, but the cross, the nice part is the cross, Jesus dying on the cross, he he took care of that. It doesn't have right. to pass. It doesn't have to be. That, that, that's part of the it's redemption not a, package. It's not a, uh, a law. Right. It's not a, a total giving. You can reject that. Right. Well, the genetics can be rejected by you well, to create a Jesus. new. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. Right. It just can't be rejected. But it, but it is in Deuteronomy well, that in it, the it will law, pass. When you, if you're a doer of the words of the Lord, you're blessed by your deeds. You're happy in those things which you do for you doers of the words of the Lord. Right. So uh, that's that's uh, Matthew six thirty three. Right. So we see that's another part which most people don't even realize is part of dying on the cross that the iniquities are stopped. Jesus paid the price to stop the iniquities right. from just the curse the of the law. Because the doctor says that's in your in your DNA. Or it's in your in your uh, in your. Uh, you don't have to have you it. You don't have to have it that way. It doesn't it, if, have to. To transfer to you. Through epigenetics. But we'll right. continue on and see some other things that happen from this statement. It says, uh, Ascension. The chastisement, punishment of our peace was upon him. Ascension is the act of rising to an important position or a higher level. Mark 16, 16 through 18, the call to a higher position. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and they shall drink any, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Right, and if we look at that, that's what Jesus, that was the very last thing Jesus did before he rose on the cross. He he gave us a commission. He's right, what is he doing? Where's Jesus going? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Right, so that's his And new... he is praying for, you know, if you pray a godly, or I should say it, not just godly, I mean, according to the word of God, he says it to the Father, and the Father says, says the scripture yes, says, amen. yes and amen. 
So Jesus will not, if you if you pray an an un, un, unscriptural prayer to the to the Father, Jesus won't even pray it. He won't even pass it to the Father. Well, it, so, of, sometimes if you're a baby Christian, he he well he, yeah he he'll grace. cover you. He will cover you. But th what we're trying to show you is as you age, you should do like we always give the example of math. When you're small, you know two and two is four. Then you do algebra. Then you do calculus. Like I've said before. And God wants, God will give you grace. Well, he loves you, but he does expect you to grow. And you do you right. have to grow and you can't be a 747 uh, pilot when you just become, a, uh, got your pilot's license. But I like this part. Like he says, the chastisement of your peace is upon him. And, and peace means, we all know what peace is. Would you be peaceful if you're sick and you couldn't lay hands on the sick and they stay sick? No. No. Would you be peaceful if you drank some poison by accident? And, well, by accident, yeah. And then you, do, you had no way out? Or right. a, a snake bit you by accident, which is Paul did on, on the Isle of... Patmos, I think. Or, no, or one of those. Not. Maybe not. Who knows? Malta but, uh, or one of those. Well, Malta, Maria. Probably. Maria or oh, well, something anyway, like that. Well, anyway, one of those islands. One of those islands where he where got picking, shipwrecked and he went on there. And he was picking up wood. And, and, he, he, and they bit him and they thought he was going to die because he'd done a sin. But you read the scripture about that. And he didn't die and they were amazed that he didn't die. Right. Didn't so that's peace. So, so we're talking about the peace he gives us. And with that commission, it says if you believe... What well, obviously shows you if you don't believe what happened, so you wouldn't have the peace. But then if you believe, it tells you all the things that will happen. You'll speak in new tongues. You'll lay hands on the, the sick. sick. If you drink shall, poison, it won't hurt. And they shall recover. Right. They shall recover. So it's like, wow, this is the peace he gave us. This is yeah. the new calling. And this is, this is Jesus said he had, last, last lesson was that we said that Jesus had all power in heaven and earth. Immediately, he in, in Mark 16, he gave us the power. So we have the responsibility of... To go out and do the commission. To do the, to do the, the contract. Right. And so we know when he was in the upper room, he gave the whole... The, right after that, they had the 120, all of them, and, and they were all filled with... In fact, Mary, the mother of Jesus... Was there. Was there. She spoke in tongues. And As all well. those disciples were there and all the... And all the uh, the seventy, I'm sure, well, were there, well, and the 120 that Jesus talked to. Right, about. and the importance of him giving us the ability to speak in tongues is that's what edifies us. We, we, there's kind of two tongues. There's the tongue in the church where it's prophecy and interpreted, and, and, and for the for the right. church. But then there's also our private or our private. Right, and so when we speak in tongues, it edifies us. And when you're edified, what do you get? Peace. You get peace. You right. you get satisfaction. Right, and so now that he's he's died on the cross and covered our sins, he's stopped the iniquity flowing through the family, he's given us a new calling, a rising up to a higher position, and he's up at a higher position. So let's see what the final one is that he gives us. There's one more part of this verse. It says, with his stripes we are healed. Healed become sound and, or healthy again Matthew 8 15 through 18 and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered it to them when the evening was come they brought up unto him many that were possessed of with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah or Elias, the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities, weakness of body or mind, and bare our sicknesses. Right, well, that, that's pretty awesome. So he gave us a commission, and then he gave us a way to stay healthy to do the commission. He heals our diseases, and he, he took care of our infirmities, and Infirmities are kind of different than sicknesses. It's weakness in, in body in and soul, mind. In mind. Right. So some not really in your it's, it's not, not really a, a disease, disease, not a not a virus, not that kind of thing. Right, because sometimes well, it doesn't happen to us, but sometimes you wake up in the morning or people did maybe say during COVID and they couldn't leave their house 
and they felt depressed and they just didn't want to get up and do anything, that would be an infirmity. An infirmity you're being right. not well in your mind. Yeah, or, you're not. You're not. Yeah, you know, hitting on all cylinders. Right. You're you might miss. be. You might be lethargic and, and not right. want to do anything. Right. But then the other side that I. It's one of the things I really love. That's really kind of cool. Was Jesus had how many stripes? Thirty nine stripes. Thirty nine stripes. That so, was by law, the Roman law. If you did, you could do a maximum of forty. But they always they go no we never do forty if we miss 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 count at least we give ourselves one less and doing thirty nine isn't far different than forty. And well, if it's happening to you, it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like it would be well, well, that's But the, the, to the Romans are going well. Thirty nine is enough because right. if you did over, they would they would punish you for allowing it to go beyond that. But the neat part of the thirty nine. Is he by his stripes were healed? Well, the thirty-nine doesn't represent thirty-nine diseases because we go well. Wow, there aren't there's so many diseases. There's way right. more. Yeah, it's it doesn't... not really thirty-nine stripes for disease. It's thirty-nine stripes for all the categories. It's a category of, of a disease. Like of they're, the, they're, of the if infirmities you, of the of not if you, infirmities, so if you're a doctor, sicknesses of, of if you're human... a doctor, it will come under a category. Right. Like there's a category maybe, since I'm not a doctor, I don't know all the categories, so, but I do. I have looked it up and there are actually 39 categories, Medical of, categories. Of, of, of sickness and disease, as opposed to just, there's multiple diseases and sickness, but there's only, they all fit in a category. Right. Because it's kind of like having a cat. So if you have like sickness has like you have Siamese cats, you have tabby cats, you have all kinds of cats, but only so many categories under cats. And so there's only yeah, there's so, so many, many categories, categories under dog or horse or pig and so on. So there's 39. Right. So it's, it's so amazing to know, like, that's what happened to Jesus on the cross. And it but works he bore today. With, all those. With, in science, it matches. Because like, of course God knew. God knew, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so now we're gonna we're gonna go back. So we have our statement that we have: we're wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. So, will God heal us? That was kind of where we go. Will he or won't he? Will he heal well, us? Well, he's already healed us, really. Right, because he did it on the cross. So he did it on the cross 2,000 years ago. Right, it's part of the contract, so you just need to receive it. It's a promise. It's a it's promise. It's a done deal. Jesus you died. It. It's yours today, Jesus, right, Jesus, right now. Right, Jesus died, and it was taken care of on the cross. So You're, res you're responsible to take it. Uh, if I give you a present, and it sits there, and you don't open it, you don't really receive it because you didn't receive it even though I gave it to you. So God gave it to us. We need to receive it, and we need to have the, the process of receiving it, which is one thing is, is don't let the Word of God depart from your eyes for His life and health and healing to all your flesh. You need to know what the Word says about your receiving the blessing of the Lord. Right, so I want to go on to our book of this week. Well, we'll Oops, we need to, hmm, we kind of don't have a picture of us, but we have the book. There's the book. <laughs> so uh, we didn't put the camera on that part, so we'll go back to us. So you saw the book. Well, we'll go back to the book. I should read you the cover of the book. The book is um, Healing Settled Forever by Kenneth Hagen. And so... so so here, here's the book. So you can see the book this way too. I actually read the book, but I kind of like to read you this part. Um, it, just a little section. There's kind of two sections I find interesting. Spiritually, there are basically three classes or categories of people in the world today. One, there are those who altogether reject the blood of Christ as the only means of remission for sin. So we see in the calling, it said those who believe are saved and those who aren't, the one in Mark. So, yeah, so you, and it's not hard to get saved. Right, so we see that there are those. Two, there are those who accept the blood of Jesus for remission of the sin only, but they deny the redemptive work of Christ that includes healing, sickness, and disease. So they might, um, they really just do the number one thing that he was wounded for, no, he was 
let's see, he was wounded for our transgressions, right? So he's wounded for our sins. So they take that part, they're born again, but then they don't get rid of iniquities. They don't go to the high calling, the ascension, and they don't believe necessarily they're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah. But it says not? they are. It's all there. It's all there. We see but, the whole package. But then there, there's like an, another one that they believe. In other words, these people stop with who forgiveth thine iniquities. They overlook the last part of the verse who says healeth thy diseases. Um, they have a problem seeing Jesus as the healer of diseases. He is their savior. All right. But either they haven't been taught correctly or they just don't believe the healing aspect of our redemption. So will will he? Yes. Well, no, he won't if they don't believe. Oh, if you don't believe, no, yeah. If you he? don't know the word of God, you can't connect right. to it. Right. Will he heal you? It's there. He's already done it on the cross. It's been done. Right. D does he have to do anything else for your salvation? No. All you have to do is believe. Right, and receive it. Romans, and so, uh, uh, John three sixteen or Romans ten nine and ten. There's other ones in there, and the in the Word of God that gives you that you know, reference. Right. So then it goes on to say, then three, there are those who accept the Bible as the inspired word of God and believe Jesus is the redeemer from sin and from sickness and disease. These people believe that our redemption includes God's blessing, salvation, healing from sickness and disease, our peace and our call to really be conquerors of the earth. Well, yeah, we have that responsibility. Kings we're kings of on, we're more than conquerors, and we're kings in life by Christ Jesus. And, right? and this is the second part I like in this book. See here, I'm reading out of the book. Jesus is our example. Therefore, since Jesus believed in and preached that healing is God's will for us, we should believe and preach the same thing. We see healing demonstrated in the ministry of Jesus while he was on earth. In fact, looking at the life of Jesus. In the four Gospels, you will notice that one of the most distinguishing features of Jesus' ministry was his healing ministry. Yes, Jesus' teaching ministry was also one of the most significant aspects of his earthly ministry because he had to continually teach the people to get them to a place of faith so that they could receive their healing. We know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans ten seventeen. And Jesus taught the people the word. He proclaimed the gospel message as he went from place to place, teaching the people. And we're going to go to, I'm not putting it up, but this is what it says in the book. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Right, so that was when Jesus stood in the synagogue and, and opened the, the the Bible, the Torah, and rolled it out, and he read that before everybody. Right, so that, that's pretty awesome. That so he said, "This day, this scripture is fulfilled in in your in your witness in in front of you." Right, so we we want to end the question forever and for you that is it will he. And the answer is, he will. He will. Like when the the blind man came to Jesus, he he said, will you hear me? And he Jesus' said, answer will. was, I will. I will. And he laid hands on him and he was healed. Got, was healed. He right. Was, right. It's just like, it's just that simple. He, just that he has. Simple. And you can do it for yourself. Just that simple. You just got to know the word of God, allow it to get into your spirit. And you got to do that through your soul, your mind. You got to say it until your spirit is 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 uh, educated. I say, or something like that. Well, really, what you do is it starts off. You it's you your spirit that causes you to receive right. well, the healing. We, we pretty much everyone, not your mind. Everyone has an easy time knowing that Jesus died on the cross, and they accept him as their Lord and Savior, and they don't. Most well, some people don't ever do it, and that's. Even though they should, some don't. But once they do that, then you should just do all the rest. Right? Take yeah. care of your iniquities. Get all get your the, peace. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, hey. And your healing. Yeah. And it's all there, there free. It's it's 
you know, we go, we're so diligent to do the things of the, of the world, but if we do the, the, be diligent to do and study the word of God and understand what he, what the word has said, what Jesus said, in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then the epistles to the to the body of Christ, we would be kings. We'd all operate as kings in life by Christ Jesus. Right, and that's why Isaiah gave us the prophecy yeah. of what Jesus right. was coming to do and that it's there for us, and then the prophecy's fulfilled when you're healed. Right, and you get those four things, and you're a king. Right, so if you have any poison in your body that might have gotten there unintentionally yeah, right. in the future. Like today. <laughs> well, like anything you, you... You can cast it out of your body. Right, in, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right, so if you, you have... You can change your body. The Word of God manufactured the body. And so therefore, Jesus is the Word. It says that in, in uh, John 1. Jesus became the word, word, right, word and right. he became flesh and dwelt among us. Because you know where the word is. You know word. that. Yeah, the truth sets you free. The, the word. truth sets you free. So therefore, if you have the true belief that Jesus sets you free, you will not be... None of the disciples were, were sick. None of them got sick. Even Paul, he was harassed by the devil. Right, well, he had he an would, infirmity. And he had he, an infirmity, which right. was not a sickness. Right, because if can't we can't prove that. The, word, the words in the true language. Well, it does say in the Bible it was a, a demon that harassed him. Right. Right, which would give you an infirmity, because as we recall above, we said infirmities are, are not really sickness. It's really... A shortcoming in your body or your mind, like right. you're depressed, it's not really a right. germ or a disease. It's so not we a, look, we look a at virus Paul. or, a, or a, a bacteria or any of that kind right. of stuff. Right, and we look at Paul, we know he probably had a bit of time trying to rationalize. He was there when he Stephen was He said it three times, you got God and said, my, my, my grace. grace is sufficient for you. Right. You have to... Cast the devil out. Right, you you have, have the responsibility. Right, and you have to know I, when... I, preached, I, I taught that last session. Right, that we have, have the responsibility to cast the devil out in the name of Jesus. You know, right. If, but also you have to know that you're redeemed from the curse of the law because of the cross. So it's all forgiven. God forgives so you, him for anything can, he right, did by, by mistake. By the Holy Spirit, he'll give you the revelation understanding on what to do regarding the devil. You right. just cast him out when you find out it's a works of the devil. Like right, but sickness is a works of the devil. Right, well you cast him out, but then I, I like the other part of our commission. One of the things is you'll speak in tongues. And as we know, speaking in tongues edify us. And so Paul spoke in tongues more than you all. So I'm sure eventually he realized the whole thing. He cast the devil out. Because the right. grace was sufficient, he spoke in tongues. The devil edified, has to leave. Edified himself, and he had the peace that Jesus offered on the cross. Because it said, "Right, he he was wounded for our transgression; he was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and right. by his stripes we're healed." So, right, yeah, the chastisement of our peace is upon him. We have peace because Jesus died on the cross. Peace is. So everything good. So today we want to leave you. Well, I will, I guess I can tell you a few things and we will leave you with this. Um, we added a, another chapter of the book. You can read for free on oh, truthwinds.com. Truth. Uh, what's the book name? Uh, not alone. By not alone. Me, by me. <laughs> but it doesn't say by me, but it is by me. But it, it's one of those eye opener books. If you read it, pass it on to your family. Well, it's, and it's it's, it's free to read. It's kind of a historical novel. Well, it's kind of a historical novel, but it gives you a different view of the world you live in. It'll open your eyes to things. And then I'll put a link for our book, uh, Healing Forever Settled, because we just forever settled that healing is. Will God? Yes, He will. Right. Right. It's the answer. And this really is a good book. It's really kind of a short book. It's an easy book to read. And you could do it in a few hours. Right. So most. there's no reason why you shouldn't. Whoops, I get <laughs> make it hard for you. Um, so do that. Tell people about um, what you're learning. Even if you don't tell them to go to watch it, we don't. We like them to watch it. We like them to watch it every week. And then we'd also. Like you, if you, if they can't watch it, if you're out having dinner with someone, share about the, you know, the redemption package, what it is. Yeah, that, well, hey. 
Now that you that you you've got your sins covered on the cross, you got Just, your iniquities covered, you got your peace and your healing all covered, right? Anything else you'd like to say? You're redeemed from the curse of the law. Redeemed from the curse of the law. And before we leave, we'd like to say a, a prayer that you'll about this that'll help you throughout the next week, and we'll see you on Wednesday. So remember, truth wins. Or should it be this way? I don't know. I, yeah, you're right. Truth. That's backwards. I don't know. This yeah, way. Yeah, that way. Yeah, maybe so I should make... Truth wins. Truth. <laughs> there it is. Truth yeah. wins. Uh, this camera stuff is backwards in my brain. Somehow, well, it, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, but I'll get it someday. Anyway, so we're going to say a quick prayer before we leave, and we'll be back with you again next Wednesday. Thank you, Father, that we have provided your word to bless the, the body of Christ, that we are able to... Uh, have the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the revelation of your word uh, to be manifest to a simple way of, of, of understanding to all of us that are listening to this uh, video today. We ask you that we are more than conquerors. We'll realize that we are more than conquerors. We're kings in life by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father. There is no evil that has any has any part in our lives because we are cognizant and able to destroy the works of the devil by the word of God and the spirit that lives in within us. We ask this now in the name of Jesus, the name of all names. Amen. And truth conquers. Truth conquers. Truth wins. And God is absolutely good.